We are going to be talking about the music industry and how it will be disrupted by Web3 blockchain technology. I'll start off by introducing myself. My name's Jared, aka Bunzi. Uh, I was a touring artist for about eight years, and then naturally the music industry chews people up, spits them out. So I started developing, working on several different things, and yeah, so experience with building software and Web3 and touring as a musician. And next we got TK. How's it going everybody? My name is TK. I'm a singer, songwriter, and producer based in Los Angeles, California. I've been in the music industry for the last 15 years now at this point. Um, over the last year, I got into Web3, primarily re releasing music NFTs, sold over a thousand music NFTs in the last year. Um, also the founder of Campfire. What we're growing with Campfire is the largest online community of music creatives that utilize Web3 technology to improve conditions for musicians throughout uh, the music industry. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Hey, everyone. My name is Violetta. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter, DJ, sound healer. I'm also building Wave World with my other half in the audience, Karma Wave. Um, and we have a music duo together, Karma Violetta. Uh, we've been experimenting in the Web3 space for a little over a year now, releasing our music as NFTs. Um, also part of Campfire and a few other amazing communities of musicians like Song Camp, Chaos. Um, excited to be here. My name is Keatley Haldeman. Uh, I'm building Dequency. It's a decentralized Sync licensing marketplace. Sync licensing is licensing music for audiovisual productions, TV, film, advertising, audiovisual NFTs. Um, I come from the traditional music industry, started a music publishing company and record label, also very focused on sync. So translating that into the Web3 world and excited to be here. Awesome. So yeah, credible people. Um, the first topic we kind of want to talk about is how blockchain can t technology can change from TK, an artist standpoint, to his fans, where now NFTs and these different types of technologies, they can connect in ways never before possible. So TK, how are you thinking about that with being an artist, connecting with your fans, and building a, a community, an ecosystem around your art? Yeah, I think in terms of building a community and building your fan base, Web3 in general um, opens up a lot of opportunities for connecting with people that want to support you. Um, you know, in the music industry, we have uh, this theory called a thousand true fans, whereas in Web3, you really only need 100 true fans, 50 true, true fans, 10 um, to actually support you. And through those fans, you can actually um, build a real financial vehicle um, that, as we're seeing now, is giving artists creative and financial freedom like we've never seen before. Yeah, I mean, on um, that point right there, that thousand true fans to a hundred, that is true because if you do have these people in their, you know, like underground hip hop and some of these other um, styles of music, people like to be early. Like, oh, I found this artist super early and now they're incentivized because they're like your like OG holders, your, you know, your original people and you can thank them later and they have incentive now to share your music to put it out there because they're in this ride with you if you do well they do well and there's this whole new ecosystem from musician to fan relationship but yeah we'd love to hear your take on this as well yeah i would say um so we're a fairly new artist and being an, a new artist it's it's hard to begin with and in web 2 it was even harder because i feel like we would have releases and we weren't getting like as much traction but in web 3 coming into this space really gave us so much hope as musicians creators artists um people actually like care <laughs> about your music um people want to support you it's like this beautiful like camaraderie that's happening right now in the space where everyone, all the artists, musicians just want to like lift each other up, support each other, collect each other's music, um, you know, go to each other's events. And it's amazing because in Web 2, I feel like it's more of like competition. And in Web 3, it's not as much right now. So yeah, that's, that's super true because going from the music industry, Twitter sphere, all your friends, yeah, they support you, but when your release comes out, no one's really sharing it or following. But in Web 3, people are like, really active on Twitter, really supportive, retweeting, 
So if you're a musician, I would just recommend like start exploring that because Web3 Twitter goes pretty hard. But Keatley, I just want to, I know you guys are working, but you're a past artist and you're more on the, you know, the contract side now, but let's hear it. Yeah, I, I mean, I got into the music industry from being an artist and making electronic music, but that's not uh, the context that I enter into Web3 now. Uh, so when you're licensing music for audiovisual, there it's very difficult. Rights are very tricky. You get you need to know who are all the publishers, who are the songwriters, who is the record label, and even if you know them, trying to actually get it licensed is a whole job in itself. So there's an industry of online licensing companies where you can put in your credit card or maybe there's a, a subscription model, um, but they're all very. Uh, the, the artists are not that established because as soon as you become established or as soon as the catalog becomes more established, they need more control. And all of these online licensing platforms take the control from the creators, the music creators. So if I'm a music artist and I want to work with one of these platforms, I have to submit my music and say, please listen to my music and tell me yes or no if I'm allowed to work with you. If they say yes, then they set the fees for all the licensing, they dictate who gets to use the music. They take up to 70% as commission, and uh, they take up to six months to pay you. So we envisioned an open, two-sided, decentralized marketplace uh, where the music rights owners set their own fees, have approval rights, get paid instantly for very low transaction fees. So that's what we're doing at Dequency, and that's really enabled by Web3, and we can't see it uh, able to work another way. Yeah, I mean, I think logistically, you know, we can speak to it releasing music, like splits, royalties, publishing, masters, all this stuff, it gets very confusing. But you can think of when you mint some of this stuff, it's all happening on the fly. If, you know, streams, royalties can be split from artist to wallet to wallet. And this really revolutionizes the way that music will be released. You know, Dequency doing, you know, some levy, heavy, like laying the groundwork there. But what's also crazy is like, it becomes a global CRM. Now like, his fans, I could be, say, airdrop them, you know, my single, and cross promote in such a healthy way where before it was like, everyone says music's not a zero sum game, but other artists don't always support other artists. They want their incentive. So it's really interesting. Collaborations now will always change. You can now do things like that. I guess I wanna hear what you guys' thoughts what type of collaboration, blockchain, and music that you'll see emerge? Yeah, I mean, like you said, I think we're streamlining what payments look like for artists when you are collaborating. Um, traditionally, in, in the music industry, you release a song through a distributor, you get some streams, you wait three months to get paid, and the money that you're getting paid is 0 .003 per stream. Now, um, with blockchain technology, we're getting paid immediately as people are um, interfacing with our art. And so when it comes to collaboration, if me and Violetta do a song together, um, let's say we're splitting whatever that song is. If you stream our song, I get paid immediately my 50%. She gets paid Im immediately her 50%. And that's all just because of everything being on a, a transparent ledger. Yeah, and that's real. I mean, doing stuff like DistroKid or Distribute, like it takes three months sometimes. And artists need to pay rent. They need to do a lot of things. And now with streaming like Spotify, all those numbers are digital. So I imagine a future where, you know, micro transactions are occurring for all the monetization streams, but would love to hear your take on that as well. Yeah, I would say also experiment, like experiment, yeah. experiment, experiment in the space. I know that's what we've we've done the past year or we try to release on, on every platform, as many platforms as we can, just to like see like what's what's the deal with this one? You know, Zora, Sound XYZ, Glass XYZ, Lens now, um, catalog. So and and your own projects, like I know, you know, TK with the Eternal Garden, like that was an epic project. So like don't be afraid to do your own larger scale projects in the space. Um, but yeah, I would say experiment as much as you can because you're not gonna fail like people think like not selling out is If they don't sell out that's a failure, but it's actually not a failure like you You just minting on the blockchain is already a win a huge win. Yeah, I mean things will age pretty well especially in this time and I think Especially if you keep grinding all your past mints are going to be special to someone. I mean 
you, you're not going to stop tomorrow, and if this is really what you're doing, you're releasing a lot of stuff, you're creating a journey, a, like a road, not roadmap, I don't like that word, but like, you know, time stamps. But I mean, I would love to hear like Dequency when it comes to collaborations and how you guys are thinking about, you know, getting artists on your platform. How are you guys going to go about that? Yeah, for sure. And before I answer that, uh, you know, you're talking about it takes three months to get paid from streaming. That's if you're the artist. If you're the songwriter, it can take nine months. If, you're, if it's foreign money, it can take a year and a half, two years, because it has to go through the royalty societies, and the royalty societies have to crunch the data and crunch the money and then pay through to different people. So one of the great promises of, of blockchain Web3 technology is if every song was represented by a smart contract with the splits baked in and then all of the different sources, even the traditional sources paid into those, that smart contract system, then people can get paid instantly. Um, so that's, you know, it's a, it's a great vision. It's something that we're helping to work toward. You know, we're doing our part on the licensing side. So to answer your question, how, how do we get people to come on board and, and have collaboration. Um, you know, right now, it's, it's definitely hands-on, right? Like, we're, help, we're finding visual artists and, and visual uh, creators, audiovisual, digital products, metaverse content, on-chain games, um, and all of that Web3 media needs music. And so we're out there talking with them, networking with them. Uh, we did a great project with, with TK. Um, uh, with an with a augmented reality uh, Immuse project that was very cool. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of it out there um, that, you know, we're just helping to, to bridge that gap. You know, over time, we want people to be using the platform. Um, specifically, we're going to build in communication tools so that the audiovisual creators can directly talk with the artists so that artists can come on and if they have um, joint works, you know, they're split between two, three, five, ten people, um, that's baked in so people can get paid instantly. So that's on our roadmap, even though you don't like that word. But um, it, it, that's what we're doing. Also, just to add, like, collaborations, um, there's a lot of communities and also pl protocols that are doing even, like, contests. I know Reveal is running a collaboration contest right now, which is super cool. You can win 5K, um, a 5K grant just for... a. Uh, a collaboration with one to two That goes two back other. to experimenting, like you're saying. Just go, yeah. go mess around with some of this stuff, and you know, there's grants and stuff like that. That, I mean, that's a really good point. I mean, another big thing is like publishing. Mu people sleep on music, but audio is a huge part of any experience. You go to see a movie, you, whatever metaverse we end up in, or whatever. But people sleep on that. People need to get publishing and all these types of things, but another box I want to open that's kind of crazy is ticketing, where we start to think about musicians touring, and now they can have an NFT or some type of ecosystem to ticket, sell tickets. And if you have maybe went to the show prior, half off, I mean, we see Ticketmaster and the Taylor Swift thing happen, where there's secondary for this too, and those royalties could be going to the artist if there's secondary sales, and if you're at that level and it could be interesting for artists to play smaller venues to open up this crazy secondary market but like i don't know what are you guys thinking about ticketing for musicians yeah i'm a huge fan of on-chain ticketing when it comes to uh shows one platform that i love in particular is called chain pass and they keep all of the web3 functionality under the hood so you interact with the platform the same way you would with a ticket master or a dice but if you were to resell your ticket to somebody else um, the artist will get that 10% royalty on every resale. So you can imagine if, you know, Coachella, for example, was using yeah. something like Chain Pass, how much money they would, uh, how much revenue they would generate every time someone sells their, Co their Coachella ticket to somebody else. And so I think that's going to do a lot of great things for artists, but then also it allows fans that go to these shows to keep their tickets in their wallets. Like, whenever yeah. I go to a concert, I always try to keep my ticket as much as I can, yeah, but... It's like this, dude. It gets call, destroyed. Right. It's like hanging up. For it's sure. like something special. It's a collectible at that point. I 100% I like, agree with Like on-chain memorabilia, yeah. Yeah, like that person with all the wristbands, they're like, hey. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, so I'm also part of a group called Legacy, and we're working on building an NFT ticketing solution that part of, part of it is the ticket, um, but also part of it is like... A, a loyalty reward system, and it's, it's a way for the artist to be able to connect directly to the fans. Because, you know, if Ticketmaster's selling the tickets, 
the artist doesn't know one by one who each of those artists are. But in this scenario, you, if you've got the, the NFT ticket, you buy a beer, you buy some merch, oh, you buy some other stuff. Interesting. Now that data gets fed to the artist and the artist team. So now they know, okay, hey, uh, 50% of my fans like this beer. That's then some serious data that they can go to get a brand sponsorship um, from a specific beer company or, or whatever. Like that's just one yeah, example. Yeah, that goes that. back to that concept of a global CRM where like everything is kind of helping and this is gonna go back to collaborations. People being like, wow, this person likes this artist but they also hold the NFTs of this artist and the, the snowball effect just starts to happen. Yeah, as far as ticketing, um, just to add, with Wave World, we did a cool experiment, um, which is our music NFT community. A year ago at NFT NYC, we started this Wave Room experience, uh, which is uh, the first token-gated, um, intimate showcase. So you could only enter if you own an NFT from that artist. TK was one of the artists that so. performed. Yeah, and we had seven artists in the wave room and we filmed the whole thing and then we minted each performance on chain on Glass XYZ with majority of it going back to the artists. So that was that super kind, cool. That's, that's awesome. And that kind of leads to the next thing of like, um, you know, how musicians can start to use this token gating, for example, like you, giving people experiences. And say this gets into the hands of like a really mainstream artist. Think of the onboarding that could happen. Like once creating a wallet's not that big of a deal and people are, it's more seamless, like how Starbucks is rolling out their NFT program with Odyssey. Imagine a Taylor Swift, back to that example, just cause like, imagine how many more people will be onboarded with a digital wallet and what can happen from that and yeah, what do you guys think about music onboarding? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways. I think when it comes to onboarding more fans, like we talk a lot about how Web3 benefits artists, but I'm a big fan of how Web3 can benefit fans as well. I think we're gonna see um, a lot of music fans um, creating careers out of just their curation and their taste in different, um, in different artists. I mean, like obviously- Playlist curators and stuff, right, yeah. I don't know, that's crazy. There's obviously like collecting music NFTs and reselling them on a secondary market. Um, there's also, like you said, playlist curating where you can you know, make a percentage of every stream that comes through your playlist that has music of your favorite artists. Because there are some fans with some yeah. solid art A&R ears that no, they know what's up and they're catching artists early. That's very interesting. No, for sure. I'm also running this experiment called uh, Pedal Power, which is like social media yield farming, where we're paying 30 uh, different music fans, of my own music fans, crypto, every day just to share one TikTok a day of me, right? So um, I think as we start to explore more of these revenue streams, we'll find fans are um, equally benefited from supporting artists in Web3. Yeah, and that kind of opens up gamifying releases, right? It's like, hey, if you help leave a review on iTunes or share this, you know, you get the bonus content too, which is a very interesting, healthy way for like that, that synergy to occur. Because most people love it, but they don't take the time to click share. And what that share does for an artist is probably more than them buying your music. So I think encouraging that and gamifying with blockchain is super interesting. Yeah, I love that idea of rewarding your fans and curators as well. And just going off of what you said, I know like Lens and also Sound now, um, for sharing the link to a song, you can get a percentage just for sharing it if someone buys that music NFT from the link that you shared, like on your Twitter, which is amazing. Like you get rewarded for curating. And, and then on top of that, like rewarding your fans too. I know like recently Jaden Violet, um, who's another artist in the space, I was retweeting like a bunch of his, his things and he just Venmoed me like $20 one day. Yeah, and let's he's go. Like, Hit he's me like, thank Venmo. you so much for like your support for retweeting, you know? And, and I'm like, now I'm even a bigger fan of him. Yeah, like, and think about that. Go. If you had your dot ETH, and that artist, it's so much like easier to send ETH than like Venmo is like, what's your number, what's your handle? It's like, no, that's such an interesting way and like to run giveaways and all that stuff. But, but yeah, we're at the two minute mark. Any other topics that you guys are like buying at the, the nails to get at? I mean, we could go all day on this, right? Like, I, 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 I think from my standpoint, there's a lot of, in the Web3 music culture about 
burning down the industry and you know rewriting it and, and setting up new. I don't actually ascribe to that that school of thought. Um, I think we need to create bridges to the traditional industry. I think the way that everything's set up um, definitely favors the power brokers. And unless we uh, put out the olive branch and say, well, okay, how can we join forces here? I think we're going to keep getting resistance. So that, that's a big part of what, what we're thinking about, how we approach it. Yeah, I agree. I feel like you need to have, as an artist, you need to have both. Web 2, a Web 2 strategy and a Web3 strategy now. You can't just be like, oh, I'm never gonna post again on Instagram or TikTok or, you know, you really have to have both, so. Yeah, I agree with what, what both of them are saying for sure. Um, no, most definitely. So that's one thing I, I definitely do is I take my kind of success and earnings in Web3 and leverage that for more success in Web2 in order to bridge the gap between my Web2 fans and my Web3 fans. So excited for the future of what we're building. Yeah, I mean, we're 2.5 right now. We're, you need to build on the backs of show, like giants. So, but it's been a wonderful talk. And thank you, everyone, that stuck around and listened. Thank you, and everyone. And there's a lot of other amazing speakers coming up. So thank you.